I uh, got a few things to try and get done today. I need to plant some corn. I need to put down some more water line in the potatoes and the corn. And then I gotta mulch the suckers. The suckers? The potatoes, that's what I meant. The corn I'm gonna plant today is peaches and cream sweet corn from over at Haas. And they're over in Georgia. Um, but I've been pretty happy with how fast they've sent me seeds and things, so I'm pretty excited about that. And they've had seeds in stock when a lot of people did not. So, here we go. So everything I've heard about corn is that you gotta plant it close together so that it can pollinate and you can get corn. But I'm also trying to figure out how to tie in the watering from my potatoes over into my corn. And so I'm gonna try rows, but I'm hoping that my rows are close enough together that I'll still get good pollination and also get corn and also be able to water at the same time I water my potatoes. So the other thing um, is I'm actually planting them about three inches apart instead of the recommended six to eight. That way, when I go to thin the plants, they will automatically be the recommended six to eight inches apart and I won't have gaps or have to fill in spaces or anything like that. So yeah, I am planting them closer than the packet says, but I'm hopeful that it'll be fine. For watering, I'm currently using flat soaker hoses by Gilmore. And this one that I'll be using on my potatoes and corn is the 75 foot length. And the thing I like about flat soaker hoses is that they really are good about targeting the roots of plants and going at a slow, steady um, drip. I also love that they're inexpensive. I can get a 25 foot line for about $8 on Amazon. They, a lot of the hoses that I use are from last year, but they are not holding up as well as I would hope they would. I mean, they are inexpensive, so that's okay. Um, but some of them have some pretty significant leaks, and so there will be areas in the garden that will get more water than other areas. I've used sprinklers, I've used soaker hoses, and honestly, I'm still not 100% happy with even these flat hoses, but I've always been intimidated by installing my own custom drip irrigation. But I think at this point, I'm just gonna have to look into doing that here in the near future. I was starting to lose hope on this row of potatoes down here, but I just kind of took my little three prong fork and dug through there and I see they're finally coming up. So I'm gonna leave the straw off of there until they really sprout up through the dirt and I'll cover those too. So if you're a beginner gardener or not super familiar with gardening, you're probably wondering why is she putting down the straw? Why the mulch? Why straw? Well, a couple of basics. Mulch is just any type of covering really that goes over your soil. It could be grass clippings, it could be plastic, it could be wood chips. In my case, I'm using straw. Um, mulch helps keep water from evaporating, so it helps you save water. It also helps deter weeds from growing and it helps regulate soil temperatures. So some people will use like red bark um, around their tomatoes and peppers to keep the soil warm because those plants really like warm soil. Um, if you use straw, it generally keeps the temperatures cooler. And so potatoes are a cooler weather crop, meaning they like cooler temperatures. And therefore I'm putting down straw to help keep the temperature below the soil a little bit cooler. And also straw is just cheaper. You can get it for like $5 a bale or even cheaper and uh, it lasts a while and it decomposes into your soil. Um, and then I also can put more and more and more on top and mound as the plants get bigger. Um, and I also like the way it looks, you know? Um, so I have never planted in that area of my garden space before. And so what I did is I rototilled, kind of, like my little tiner thing, um, up that space. And then I went and got some compost, shredded bark, and just some topsoil all mixed together from a local nursery. And I put it on there. And so that's what the potatoes have been um, growing in. And then I just kind of spread out and leveled the other part of it where I planted the corn. 
Um, so I expect there will be some weeds. We get really bad like crabgrass and goat heads. I don't know what the official name for those things are. Um, and in my regular garden space, I, they're, I'm getting them less and less. But in that garden space, I fully expect them to be popping up through the dirt, through the straw, and giving me slivers. I think I've shown you guys these Chinese cabbages a few times, and uh, I've had kind of a pest or an insect problem. I don't know if you can see the holes from the bugs. And I've tried a few different like organic spray type things, and I just feel like I feel like it slowed it down maybe. Um, these ones over here got the brunt of it. And what I actually did is I went through and I chopped off some of the lower leaves. I'm gonna try spraying again with this three-in-one safer brand, whatever. And then I'm gonna try something from Joe Gardner. Here he actually puts tool over his um, plants to keep out uh, insects and things. One other thing I wanted to show you before I put tool over here is these are avalanche beets right next to my cabbages. And if you pull right there, you can see a nice beet forming and they are supposed to be white. So I'm excited. I just covered these. I don't really know for sure what I'm doing. This is a new thing for me, but you can see this is your basic like wedding <laughs> craft tool. Um, I've pinned it down with some landscape staples. Put it on my smaller ones. Like I said, I don't know if these are gonna make it before it gets too hot. And I have one more little row to do. The last couple hours of the day, I like to let the girls out and get some free ranging in, some grass, some bugs. I don't like to let them out all day because wild dogs run around and I just can't protect them, but I do like to give them at least a couple hours of freedom in the evenings. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what were you doing? Today's... Ah, who pooed in there? Disgusting. For the record, this is not one day's worth of eggs. This is probably three days worth of eggs. And honestly, I just got three today, which is a little bit... I usually get at least four a day, if not five. So that was a little bit less than I was expecting. 